have a charitable project in mind, but don't necessarily want to go through all of the process of establishing a 501c3 nonprofit organization, they can work with us and we become their umbrella, their back end, and they just get to go do the fun project, whatever, build the park or the uh, community center or something. We handle the, the charitable side, take care of all the IRS reporting and the tax documents, and then they get to do the work. And once the project's over, the fund closes out and goes away. We, at this moment, we have 107 of those uh, fiscal sponsorship funds. We have unrestricted funds. We actually have one. I mentioned earlier the Oklahoma Initiative Fund. That doesn't come with any kind of stipulations other than once a year, our board decides sort of what to do with that money. And this year, as I mentioned, it's education completion projects. And then escrow funds, we hold things temporarily. We have um, the biggest one right now is a piece of land in downtown Oklahoma City. Uh, a donor had decided that he didn't want the land anymore, so he put that into escrow with us uh, for a period of time so that a school, a charter school, could eventually be built on that, on that property. So that's sort of a quick overview of the, the way we work, except for I mentioned community funds earlier and I kind of skipped it. Um, I'll ask Will if he wants to elaborate a little bit on how that community fund thing is structured because it's one of our, we think it's one of our best kind of products. And Will manages most of those for us. So as Randy mentioned, <clears throat> the community funds, Alva is one of roughly 35 community funds that we have across the state. These act kind of like a fiscal sponsorship. Um, they're all different sizes. They act in a variety of ways. Chickasha um, is about $2.5 million, and that came from one donor. Um, when she passed away, she left money to the Chickasha community, and they set up a foundation, and they are a grant-making foundation. Um, Garber, Laverne, I mean, we're all over. Those are acting more as special projects. Um, some, Norman and Stillwater and Tahlequah, are very engaged in fundraising, and then they make grants. Um, what Alva Community Foundation has really been good at is telling other people in the community, here's ways to benefit your organization. Here's ways to support the um, prison chapel. Here's ways to support the school system. Here's ways to support scholarships. So they can act in a variety of ways, um, and essentially anything that you guys, that people want to do that is charitable, not necessarily a 501c3, that's where we can help. Randy mentioned the fiscal sponsorships. And Alva's is uh, just under two million and is our fourth largest. We can actually skip whole. ahead two slides right here and I'll show you. If you want to kind of look, this is specific to Alva, and I'll back up to the other slides in just a second. But at the moment, you do have 48 funds in the Alva community, um, collective assets of 1.9, so just under 2 million, as Will said. And some examples, um, everything from the fire department, chamber of commerce, the community fund in general, um, the hospital, uh, public library foundation, uh, the Runny Mead, have I pronounced that correctly? Runny Mead building, uh, Cherokee Strip Museum, the uh, Northwest Career Academy and the Northwest Technology Center. They're very active. They just sent another check yesterday. And then uh, Share Medical Foundation is one of our newer partnerships. And we'll be headed from here today to talk to uh, Mayor Parker about some, some activities that he has going on over there. So very active, very active for the uh, community of Alba. And we thank you for allowing us to be your philanthropic partner. Let me back up for just two seconds here and talk through this. Um, it's, I realize it's hard to see. We'll make all this available to you after the meeting today for sure. Um, this document we put together, and I'll talk you through it because it can be a little misrepresentative in general. Everything that's not in blue, um, these are all of the private grant making foundations, and I'm sorry, not just private, but any organization that's chartered in the state of Oklahoma to make grants. Once a year, there's a report that comes out from um, an organization called the uh, Philanthropy Southwest, and it's sort of the giving study, and it just ranks how much money goes out from each of these organizations. So this is 2014's report, but it's actually using the year 2013 tax data because it's always a year behind getting IRS information. Our, our number that we plugged in there because we have our own accounting team on site, I just have them pull up year-to-date numbers for, I'm sorry, for the calendar year of 2014, and we were able to say 
how we rank compared against the others. So it's a little bit of an apples and oranges comparison, but it's almost impossible to get real-time data from anybody who's not us. Um, the Schusterman Family Foundation is at the top. The way that we rank as a whole for Communities Foundation of Oklahoma, we're number eight. We're the eighth largest grant maker in the state, and that's about $13.4 million that went out the door for charitable purposes in the calendar year of 2014. And we'd just like to show this as a way to kind of say we're, we're a pretty significant player in the, in the state, and uh, we, because of the generosity of you, you all and the funds that communities like Alva hold with us, it's what allows us to do this. Um, so again, 48 phones, 1.9 million here. And then I just wanted to close out by making our contact information available. I have business cards and a few of our packets as well if anybody's interested in more information after today. But we certainly wanted to um, open it up for questions, if there are any questions. If I can elaborate on anything in particular. Yes, sir. Yep, so I'm guessing that that was done as a fiscal sponsorship. So that would be a 3% charge or a minimum of $250. Some of the projects we work with are relatively small in dollar amounts, so we ba barely meet the minimum in most cases. And that 3% is kind of misleading. It's 3% of the average daily balance over a year. So if you had $10,000 in the account every day for an entire year, your fee would be $300. So very few, I don't remember the percent, less than 10% probably. Oh, far less than more than Yeah. Short-term money in, money out type stuff. Absolutely. And actually, when we had our account in there back in 06, 07-ish, interest rates, we were actually coming out ahead because we collected interest on the account. So we were... Oh, you pay interest, but you're also charging... It's certain, certain, not all uh, fiscal sponsorships do that, but for, uh, let's say you're raising money for an endowment or something like that, then there is, that is uh, interest-bearing. Okay. For the earnings, yeah. Uh, fiscal sponsorships, in the spirit of transparency, we don't make a lot of money off of fiscal sponsorships. We do it because we think it's part of our mission that our founders had the vision to help in rural Oklahoma. And so we, we try to make up the revenue loss in other ways. Um, and fiscal sponsorships is just a, a thing we do as a good customer service. We get calls all the time, though. I've had three already this week about new fiscal sponsorships. And unfortunately, regulations don't allow us to do all of them. Um, sometimes individual or groups want to come together and do funds to benefit certain individuals or pay for kids to go to college. Unfortunately, we just we can't do that because of IRS regulations. But we try to always explain when we say no. Yes, sir. Can you give us an average rate of return over the last, say, three years? I can if you bear with me I'll pull up our website here I did not bring our scorecards with me but bear with they're, they're in the packets I think are they like yeah <clears throat> we just got our new ones for the quarter um, yes so um, for the trailing three months, we were at 0.5%. Uh, for the trailing 12 months, at 5.3% return for our portfolios. This is We have three different pool options. Mr. Ryerson can probably speak better to this than I can. Um, our biggest pool is called the balance pool, and that's where the majority of our funds sit. That's actually at 63.3 million right now, and that is the fund that I'm referencing. So for the tra trailing 12 months, that returned 5.3%. For the uh, three-year annualized return for that was at 9.6%. And is that net of your, your income? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir? What's your uh, administrative expense ratio? Our administrative expense ratio? So we actually have very low administrative overhead. Um, the way that it works is our foundation doesn't actually have employees. We're all employed by a different company, and Communities Foundation, our board of directors, has contracted with this company to handle our admin fee. That's pretty much a flat fee each year. Um, so I'm guessing it's probably around 3% uh, of our total. 
Yeah. Not even lower than that. It, probably even lower, as Will said. It's it's a little confusing when you think in terms of traditional nonprofits and you talk about operating overhead versus programmatic. We don't have program. Our program is our service back to the community. So we, it's hard for us to compare in that respect, but it, it's a very low fee. I'm not sure if you want to add anything. Doing good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just the way government's doing it. We have a whole lot of shared expenses across 20 different clients, customers. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Does your management group make investment decisions or do you have someone employed or do you let these funds go out to other investment groups? Right. So we actually contract with Bank First and their trust department. Okay. They uh, have money managers who are hired on our behalf. And they're the ones who are evaluating and making those decisions daily. Yeah, we don't. We're, we're, not, we're not smart enough, nor do we have the time to sit in front of our computers, because that would mean we wouldn't be able to be out and talking to groups such as yours today. <coughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Anything, uh, any big projects coming across that you think we ought to just know about that are kind of unique or interesting? That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, the, the coolest project that we have right now, one of our donor advised fund holders that I mentioned earlier, um, he wishes to remain anonymous, so I won't share his name, but he has decided that he really wants to do splash pads, the, the parks with the splash pads for the kids to play. So he has, across several communities across Oklahoma, offered if they'll raise two-thirds of the cost, then he'll kick in a little bit as well. Um, so he's doing quite a bit of those right now and has given me the directive that if I hear of other communities who are interested in this to let him know and he'll decide whether or not it's something he can support. Um, I think he's done maybe five or six so far. Yeah, Stillwater I think may be in line for one. Piedmont is the most recent one he's done that in. So that's a, that's a cool project. Anything else come to mind? Um, one more question. Yeah. What's the average cost of a splash bed? Great question. Um, they can be, they can vary greatly. Um, I can get exact numbers for you. I've heard of one that was seventy thousand on the high end. Uh, actually, that was probably the middle. Tulsa did one a few years ago, and when I was with my previous job, we were helping with that. But it, inc it included showers and a community performance stage, and that was a couple hundred thousand. Um, I'll pull exact numbers and I'll get them to you. For, that might be a bit for that. Okay. Fantastic. And we have a donor who's still interested in maybe helping out, so that would be great. Yes, sir. Can you explain to me exactly what you're talking about, the splash pad? Yeah. So if you've seen... Uh, consists you, of what? Sorry? It consists, consists of what? So usually these are in, embedded in larger parks, and it's just an area where there's a shallow water pool, and the, the children can go splash around and play in the water. It's not a swimming pool. It's just a, a pad that they splash on. Sometimes they have slides. Fountains, Fountain, sprinklers. Fancy big. hoses. Miniature water world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Kids love them. Parents seem to love them too because they're not drenched when they come out, usually. You enjoy it. <laughs> You'd like it, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody have to help me get up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it.